Hi everyone, this is Tyler Britt, your Instructional Technology Coordinator with another edition of Snack Pack, a Rapid Fire PD. Today we're going to talk a little bit about using Google Images with students and more specifically how to have students use Google Images in a way that's ethical and uh, well cited. So I'm going to start with a simple Google search. I'm going to search for Smoky Mountains. You'll notice that when I search Smoky Mountains, I get some web results back right away. I'm going to click on Images. Of course, you can always get here straight away just by going to images.google.com, or you can go the way I went. So when I search for Smoky Mountains, I'm automatically greeted with a bunch of images, and for students who are using a presentation, or even ourselves, we have a tendency to go grab the first picture we like and use it. However, not all images on the internet are actually labeled for reuse. So this is a nice opportunity to have a conversation with your students about copyright and fair use issues. I want to show you something, a feature on Google Image Search called Search Tools. There are a couple of things I really like here. We'll get to the usage rights, which is the main uh, purpose for this screencast in a moment. But I want to show you some other things. As you are searching for images to use for students um, or for your own lessons, you do have a variety of choices here. For instance, by default, any size image is going to show up that matches the Smoky Mountains criteria. You can also search for large, medium, or icon-sized um, images if you're looking for something in particular. You can also search for larger than. So here's your image size. And then we have the NPs, which stands for megapixel. So if I actually search for something that's a really high megapixel, like maybe 15, I know that I'm going to get a really high quality image whenever I go look at that photo. So this could be useful to you for a variety of purposes, especially if you're a visual arts teacher looking for a high quality photo to use with your students. I'm going to leave that at any size. <clears throat> I want to show you under search tools, you can also define by color. So perhaps I want a picture of the Smoky Mountains that really has a lot of red in it. This is going to show me results that are tagged with uh, Smoky Mountains that have mostly red. I'm going to go back to any color. You can also search for black and white, uh, transparent images, things like that. Type is going to help me determine what type of photo. So if I choose face, you notice that I get image results that are associated with Smoky Mountains in Google search that have pictures of folks' face. Can't have the Smoky Mountains without Dolly Parton, right? I can also search by time criteria. So if I go to the past 24 hours, I see some items that come up. Uh, here's a photo from TripAdvisor that was posted within the last five hours. Doesn't mean the photo was taken in the last five hours. It means that it was listed here in the last five hours. But this is a nice way to find some images that are usually um, more recent or at least filter in that way. What I really want to get to is the usage rights. By default, Google Images does not search by license. It is important to start having conversations with kids about uh, fair use of images. Just as we teach students that if you don't type or write an idea, you must give credit where credit is due, we need to have the same ethical standards for images in videos. What I would recommend you do is under usage rights, search one of these that's labeled for reuse. Now you have labeled for non-commercial reuse, that would be your purposes at school. Non-commercial reuse with modification. So you could actually modify that image to crop it, add different elements to it, change the color, change the font, things like that if you wanted. The generic labeled for reuse or labeled for reuse with modification. And notice that the non-commercial um, uh, is out of there. I'm just going to hit labeled for reuse. Now I know that any of these images that are listed here are actually labeled for reuse, meaning that I can fairly use them and cite them. Under more tools, I can just hit all results or show sizes so that it shows me the size of the image. Obviously, the larger the uh, number here, the bigger the image is. So that can be helpful when you're trying to find a particular photo for a purpose in a presentation. It is important to point out that there are actual ways to cite photographs found on a website, that there is an MLA and an APA structure for this, and we really ought to be teaching students to give credit where credit was due. If it's not your photo taken with your camera, you need to cite your source, and you need to make sure that you're using an image that you have the uh, fair, at fair use to use. Just because it's listed on the internet doesn't mean that it's out there for your taking. I hope this quick little view into Google image searches was helpful to you. 
um, feel free to contact me should you have follow-up questions and onward we go.